Good evening. It was a chance encounter among strangers that's shedding light on a group that some are calling silent survivors. Advocates warn incidents of drugging at bars are on the rise, and they say it's especially prevalent over the holidays. She just looked at me and told me where she had been. She said, I, was, I think I was drugged. Upon returning from a gathering with friends, this mother and daughter said they approached a woman in her 20s who appeared shaken, scared, and unable to move inside St. Clair West subway station. And she was crying, and she was attempting to contact her family or her friends, and she couldn't get through. And I think it's just the more that she felt um, hopeless, like she didn't have any way to get home, the, the more upset she got. How did she know that she had been drugged? All she knew was that she was at the bar and she hadn't been really, you know, drinking a lot and then all of a sudden she didn't know where she was. And then my daughter contacted her the next day to just affirm, you know, her own belief in herself that she had actually been drugged because there's so much self-doubt that comes into these situations. Alejandra says the woman didn't report it to police in fear she wouldn't be believed. The incident still weighing on this mother and daughter has sparked a conversation about the mechanisms in place to keep women safe at bars. You can go to a bar or a restaurant and know that you're not going to get sick because uh, they've got a, they, you know, their, their kitchen is, is uh, inspected. But a young woman can't go to a bar and have a drink and know that she's going to be safe. And it becomes a private problem. It becomes uh, a situation where women suffer in silence. Are these incidents tracked at all? Unfortunately, no. Especially for young Victoria Bell is the founder of the Dandelion Initiative dedicated to ending sexual violence. She says troubling incidents like drugging drinks tends to increase over the holidays as more people are out celebrating. Well, we're talking about drugging and dosing where most people don't even know that it's happened to them. They don't know the signs. They don't know where to go for help. They're confused and they don't want to disclose. So it's really, really unreported. The initiative Safe Bars Project is pushing for drinking establishments to be more accountable to their patrons, to incorporate policies in their workplaces and empower staff to be proactive in making the bar environment safer. The hope is to change the culture through education, awareness and dispelling stigmas. And they're targeting bars and restaurants because Bell says they serve the substance that is most commonly used in sexual assaults, alcohol. Unfortunately, drug facilitated sexual assault is very common and the first substance used in drug facilitated sexual assault, the most common substance used is alcohol. Oftentimes, perpetrators are people that we know, so it's really important for bars and restaurants to be accountable during this time to create a safe space for people to go to say, I think I've been drugged or dosed, can you help me? For the Bravo family, they're also reminding bystanders of the power behind comforting strangers. When she finally communicated with a friend, she said to him something that broke my heart. She said, it's okay, I'm with friends now. And that made us feel like we were there for her. And the Bravo family tells us the woman wishes to remain anonymous, but she's glad this topic is getting exposure. The mother and daughter say the incident has prompted them to question if drugging at bars is even tracked at all. Well, we did ask Toronto Police that question today, but we are told it's being a, it being a holiday today, they need a couple more days to track down that data.